So Michael Porter in 1980 developed uh, three generic strategies. And what's interesting is that when we look at things like competitive advantage, we need to understand what do we mean by competitive advantage. An easy, simple way of saying it, competitive advantage is where you make above average profits than your competitors. So it's something that you can measure. And when we look at the three generic strategies, it's a source of competitive advantage. So let's see what it looks like. Originally, it came out as a triangle, but unfortunately, we need to make that a little bit more um, user-friendly because some companies were fitting in all different types in all three parts, which is obviously not exactly what we want to do. So if we look at here, where we've got the competitive scope, here we've got the narrow, which is a narrow uh, market, and a broad market. And then here we have a low cost and a higher cost. And if we look at it from an example of the airline industry, so if you're looking at trying to transport in the airline industry any type of customer, then that would fit in the broad. If we're looking at going after the business travel, that's obviously a narrow segment of the market, so that would fit in here. So when we look at a situation in this scenario of an airlines, where we could turn around and say, well, anybody that's a, a company that's going low cost and after a broad segment would be something like Ryanair. That fits in there quite happily. And then a narrow market that's still low cost, that's going after the business traveler, then again, EasyJet would fit in there quite nicely. And then a high cost to a broad market, that could be anything like a BA or Virgin, giving a slightly higher cost, obviously, to the low cost, the no frills, but they're going after all the different types of markets. And then a higher cost in an Aaron Art market, that used to be things like Concorde, uh, maybe even first class. Or oh, now, maybe that's the charter jets. So where we can see people who are buying time, um, timeshare for aircraft, that's a much higher cost and that's obviously a narrow market. So trying to keep it really, really simple, we need to be able to put companies, organizations to see where their sources of competitive advantage against their competitive scope. So looking at it from this perspective, what Porter was trying to say is that the cost leadership is very, very important. The no frills, everything must be low cost. And when we look at organizations that are very, very good at this, for example, the Ryanairs of this world, where they pass the costs on to you, another good example of that is IKEA. IKEA is a low-cost organization, and it's low-cost right the way through. So we can see the chief executive of IKEA does not travel business class or first class. None of the executives travel business class or first class. They're in the economy. Why? Because it's a low-cost business. And if it's a low-cost, Everything must be no cost. It's part of the mantra, the values, the beliefs, and everything within that organization. If we look at differentiation, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to be slightly different. Yes, there might be a slightly higher cost to that, but that higher cost actually makes your product, your service totally different. So how do we differentiate our service from each other and from the low cost and from the high service industries? Or the final one is the focus on the niche strategy. So sometimes we find situations where a niche could just be a very, very small organization, one or two people who are focusing on, on a very, very small customer base. So specialization of organizations, turning around and saying we're not looking after critical mass because if we're going after the low cost, the low cost leadership, we must have economies of scale, which means we must have market share, which means we must have lots and lots of customers. Here is the opposite. I don't need a lot of customers because I'm in a niche market. My prices are going to be higher. So where we can see a niche or a focus will be the specializations. So where we get the tax lawyers or any type of defense lawyers where they're charging thousands of pounds per hour, they're not going after a mass market. They're not going after differentiation. They're going after a very tiny part of that market. And that's where they will control that niche or that focus. One of the things that we need to be careful of, and that's why when you look at some organizations, and indeed look at your own organization, if you get a point and go, well, part of our organization is low cost, and some of it is focused, and some of it is differentiating, in essence, what you're doing is you're stuck in the middle. You need to have a very, very clear idea, and that's why it's called a generic strategy. You need to be into one of those three boxes. You either need to be low cost. You either need to be niche or focused. You either need to be differentiating. You 
can't be stuck in the middle, in between one or the other. You're just going to be in between a rock and a hard place. And your positioning and your source of competitive advantage is going to be really confusing, both internally and externally.